Hey, this is Joe from Personas, and today I'm going to talk about the different track types I use inside the mixer inside of Studio One. We're getting some of the aftermath rain from Hurricane Laura, so it's coming down here. But I got to shoot a video, so you might hear a little bit of rain in the background. That's fine. What's a little rain when there's audio equipment around, right? Okay, this video is for you if you are new to recording software or new to Studio One. I want to show you some of the basic track functions here. You probably know a lot of this already if you've been around a while, but if you're new, this is for you. Didn't even mean for that to rhyme. So let's go through. These are specifically, there's a few more track types that I won't talk about today. They're a little more advanced. You won't really need them, but getting started in the mixer these are the tracks that I use all the time. First of all, if you hit F3, that will bring up your mixer. And the first one is obviously the audio track. I've got one here. It's got all the things you'd expect out of an audio track. We can adjust the volume. We can adjust the panning. We can solo. We can mute. We can record enable, which means getting it ready to record. We can see their signal there. And we can click this one, which will allow us to monitor that. So you can hear me going through that. Anyway, that's don't worry about that sound. That has to do with my setup here today. Uh, so that's the audio track. Audio tracks can be both stereo and mono. Stereo meaning it has a left and a right. So if we look at the wave file here, you'll see there's two waveforms. That means this is the left one, this is the right one. Uh, but we can also change that to mono. I mentioned that in a recent video by just clicking this button here, and now it becomes mono. What's the difference in sound? Real quick, take a listen. I'll start stereo, then switch to mono. <laughs> So just like it sounds, stereo gives us a wide stereo image. Mono gives it to us right up the middle, okay? So this is our starting point. You've got some tracks in the session, and now you want to mix. Well, at the simplest of ways, you can just mix this right now as it is, meaning we can take this track, we can add our other tracks, have just audio channels, and that'd be it. The only other channel we deal with is this one over here on the right, which a lot of times I like to make red so I can see it a little better. This is our main output. This never changes. This is always right here on the right-hand side of the session. And this is just telling me all the tracks in my session are going to mix down into this stereo channel. And that's what's going to feed uh, my outputs so that I can hear them through my headphones or my speakers. That's also what, when we do a mix down, when we're done with this, that's what gets mixed down. Everything that goes through that. Which, by default, every channel you create will go to the main output. How do you know? Because you've got this little section here. On every audio channel, the top one tells us what the inputs to that channel are. So what input on our interface, where are we going to plug the microphone to record to this track. And the bottom one defaults to the main output, which is this channel here. This is where you can put things like mix bus compression, metering plugins, things like that. You don't have to do anything if you're starting out. Just know that's where everything lands there. Uh, no matter what you do over here, it eventually is going to land here. And you can set the outputs of this channel to the, proper, the appropriate outputs on your interface. A lot of times that's channels one and two, which means if I have an interface with eight channels on the back and I set this to channel one plus two, I'm going to plug my speakers into channels one and two coming out of the back. So the output of the interface will go into my speakers um, or Channels 1 and 2 is typically def by default routed to the headphone jack, so I should be able to hear things if I have things set up this way. Sometimes you may start, and this might show as none, and you won't hear anything. That's why. Make sure that is set to a particular output. Now, I'm using a Studio Live mixer that has 64 outputs. That's ridiculous for this video. We're going to stick with 1 and 2. That's what I use. That's what I recommend you using as well. All right, so audio channels. We're familiar with them. If you've seen any videos on any audio software in the last... 20 years, you're familiar with an audio channel. It has a section up here for inserts. Those are where plugins go. Section here for sends, which is where what we use to send a copy of the signal somewhere else. Uh, much like if you're running an analog mixer and you run a separate auxiliary send to run the stage wedge for the singer and he wants more of himself, you would use sends, send knobs to send those. Same concept here except it's all done digitally inside the software and we can do some pretty cool things. So let me create a new channel. Let's create a bus channel and then let's also create an effects channel and then let's create a VCA channel. These are the these four here are kind of the four main channels that I use in my sessions. Audio being the most popular, buses and effects channels being second most, and then I'll occasionally reach for a VCA. I'm going to explain all of these for you right now. So we've gone, we've gone over the bus channel, or the, sorry, the let's name this because that'll make things a little easier. Let's call this audio channel, okay? 
Now this is a bus, this is an effects channel, this is a VCA. VCAs are completely different. Bus channels and effects channels are almost identical. So what is a bus? Um, when I first learned audio, we were told a bus is something that transfers audio from one place to another. It is literally like a bus in real life. Audio gets on at one station and gets off at another. And the station, the connection point that takes them from one place to the next is a bus. It's kind of routing, it's pipelines, it's piping underneath the system to get audio to different places. You may remember when I talked about your main mix over here on the right, that is called, sometimes we call that a mix bus. So it's a two channel, meaning stereo bus, that everything feeds into. So if you did nothing else in your session, it's all feeding into a stereo bus, and that bus dumps out here at the main output where we can adjust the level of our entire mix with that fader, okay? Well, we can use buses to do lots of different things. So for example, let's say, let's say I have four audio tracks here, or five, because I can't count. And let's say I wanna run all of those through one single fader. I'd rather have one fader for all of them than five, much like you would use subgroups on an analog mixer at a live show. I want to run all my drums to one fader so I can just move that fader up and down. We can do that really easily in Studio One by routing them to a bus channel. Now, the easiest way to do that is to select the channels that you want to route to a bus, right-click on them, and choose Add Bus for Selected Channels and it will do all the stuff under the hood for you. It created this new bus channel here. That's how I would recommend you doing it, but let's undo that and I'll show you the way we can do it here if the bus already exists. So this bus here is called bus one. Let's name that drum bus and let's just pretend that these are all drums. What I do is I select all these channels. I do that by clicking the first one, holding shift, clicking the last one. Then in this section here, this IO section, input output IO section, I'm gonna click on the bottom section and that shows me my outputs for these channels. And as you can see, drum bus is now a selection. I can go boop. And now all of these channels are going, are outputting, their output is going to this drum bus. And then the drum bus is going to the main output. So we've added a new stop along the way for these channels to come through. So now if I hit play, we'll hear some audio. And if I turn down that bus channel, we don't hear the audio because even though this fader is up, the audio is going through this bus and if whatever I do to the bus happens to all the channels that are feeding into that bus, okay? The other big benefit of buses is we can put plugins directly onto them. So if I want to use um, a compressor across all of my drums, I can put a compressor on the drum bus and it's compressing that combined sound rather than going in and compressing the individual tracks. Very common thing to do in mixing. Buses also have a send section, so I could say, I wanna send all of this drum mix, a copy of that, to a reverb channel, and I can do that. I just drag the reverb to the send section, it creates an effects channel with the reverb plugin that I like, and now I can send some of this channel to that reverb. Here's what that sounds like. That's the reverb that we just created, okay? Now, that gets us to our next channel type, which is this effects channel. By the way, there's an easy way to tell what kind of channels they are just by looking at them. Audio channels have white faders, and they have this little uh, emblem here that looks kind of like an audio waveform. Those are audio channels. Buses and effects channels have blue faders, and they have these emblems down here. This looks kind of like a some sort of a flow diagram where these signals are being joined together, which is what a bus does. This one just says FX, which stands for effects. Now, effects channels and bus channels are identical except for one key difference. You'll notice the, the bus channel has a send section, the effects channel does not. That's the difference. Typically, we're using effects channels like this where I'm sending a bunch of signals to this reverb so I can have some reverb in my mix. I don't usually need to send that reverb somewhere else like we would with everything else. Does that make sense? Um, if you did need to, for some reason, send your reverb signal to another signal, you could do that. You would just want to put your reverb on a bus instead of an effects channel, okay? Bus effects channel. All right, now what is this red channel here? This is a VCA channel. VCA stands for Voltage Control Amplifier. Or something like that. These were popular on analog boards. They gave you a lot of extra control over your mix. In the digital system, they're still really handy. Basically, this red fader, which by the way, all the VCAs are red. That's an easy way to identify and find them in your session. These are like remote control faders. 
I can assign any number of faders in my session from just one fader up to all the faders in this session to this fader. And when I move the red one, the other ones will move as well. So how does that work? One of the ways you can do it is by selecting the channels you want to have a VCA fader and use the add VCA for selected channels option. That's the easiest way. And you'll see this second fader here showed up. And if we click on this little section here, we can see which channels that it's controlling. The other option is, you see this little section here at the bottom of the channels, this little rectangle? I did not know what that was for the longest time. That allows me to do the assignment. So I can say this one is assigned to VCA2. I actually want to assign that to VCA1. And I want to assign this one to VCA1 and this one to VCA1. Now, watch what happens when I move these VCA faders. When I move VCA1, those other three move with it. When I move VCA2, those four channels move along with it. So it's moving them all in relation to one another. So if I had a drum mix over here and everything was great, it was just a little too loud, I could just move my VCA fader and you can see they all move kind of in relation to one another. Now you could also move the drum bus like this, but let's say you want to take your drums and your bass tracks and your guitars and move them all up and down together. It's not terribly uncommon. You could have them all assigned to a VCA fader. Then when you move that, they all move. Really cool option for doing some automation passes or just overall saying, let me just turn the drums and bass down for a minute and bring the drums and bass back in. And I'm not affecting the individual channels. I'm not affecting the plugins that are there. I'm just basically remote controlling those faders. Now, additional tracks that are available to you, there are instrument tracks, there are the new aux channels, there's the new listen bus. If you're just beginning, I say, unless you're doing a lot of MIDI production, you don't really need those. Uh, instrument tracks are really just for this view to put your MIDI instruments in. As far as the mixer is concerned, these are the four types that I want you to pay attention to and use, and you can always graduate to more later. All right, that's it for this video. My name is Joe from Personas. Be sure to like the video and subscribe if it was helpful for you. We're always putting out more content, and the best way to make sure you see it is to make sure you're subscribed to our channel. All right, that's it for today. See you in the next one.